Welcome everybody to the Daniel Coogan Associates Wealth Management Review for September 14th, 2023. Today's presentation is titled Strategy Update. We are real close. My name is Rocky Istvan. I'm the Chief Compliance Officer and Associate Wealth Manager at Daniel Coogan Associates. Daniel Krug, CEO and Senior Wealth Manager, will be joining me in today's presentation. A recap of what we're going over today is we're going to start out talking a little bit about the strategy. We're going to again kind of revisit capital weighted and the equal weighted uh, S&P returns year to date. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the broader picture of the leading economic indicators, where we're at today, and then wrap up. So, Well, this one's going to be a quick one, I think. Um, I'm getting kind of excited based on what's going on with the market. I know a lot of people aren't getting that excited because the market is going down, but it does bode well for our strategy. Yep. So let's go ahead and move forward then. Okay. Um, strategy recap. Let's talk about exactly what we were trying to accomplish initially. Uh, first, um, we really, again, need to understand the difference between a capital weighted S&P 500, which is what most people are, are seeing on the news all the time, uh, the capital weighted is really what exactly what it says. It's the larger companies representing a larger percentage of the index versus smaller companies. Conversely, look at the equal weighted. The equal weighted means that you can have a real small company and it will have an equal weight to, let's say, an Apple, uh, which is a much larger company. Um, so the equal weighted probably is a better representation on what the market is doing from a broader sense. Now, going back to the strategy recap, if you recall around uh, the highs of 2023 in the market, uh, the intent was to allocate a higher percentage of the client's portfolios to more defensive positions. So step one, move a portion of the funds from higher risk equities to treasuries and or high yield money markets. Step two, eh, well, it was a waiting game. We were waiting for favorable market conditions at that point in order to make the next move. Step three, reallocate from defensive position, again, the treasuries and the high yield money markets, back to growth portfolios. Now, the question is, is where are we in this strategy? Well, again, if you look at the capital weighted S&P 500, you'd look at it and say, oh my goodness, it's up 16.19% as of yesterday in the market. Um, and it's above the 50 day moving average. So what's wrong? Why aren't we in the market? Well, again, this is the capital weighted, we've got a small sector uh, of high tech portfolios that are driving this index. Let's go to the equal weighted. You got a totally different chart, even though they're all the same stocks. The way our strategy was designed is we're looking at more of the broader market, which is what we have here. The S&P 500 in, in this chart here starts at the beginning of the year. And there was a bit of a run up and then it came back down and then we had another run up. We actually got to a high year to date of 8.82%. Well, currently we're at 3.7%, which is a far cry from the capital weighted S&P 500. So let's apply our strategy to this. First, Right around the end of January, mid-February, we were buying into treasuries and high yield money markets and some value portfolios, moving away from growth portfolios, not entirely, but a percentage of the portfolio. People have asked, and it's a really a legitimate question, when we hit that low closer to March, April, uh, why didn't we go back in at that point? Well, if you recall, at that stage of this uh, strategy, everybody was calling for a high P 
propensity to go into a recession, either a mild recession or possibly a normal recession with a very small likelihood that it was just going to be small growth. Well, things have changed since there, then. So that's why at that point, the economic indicators were not telling us to pull the trigger. Now, if you move forward, if you look at the right side of this chart, you see that blue arrow. And that is the X dividend date of the S&P 500 equal weighted index here. Now, why is that important? Because over the last five dividends that were paid out, and they're paid out quarterly, the S&P equal weighted has dropped significantly right around that dividend date. And you can see in this chart that we're heading that direction right now. So it seems like things are lining up. In addition to that, you've got a long-term trend line, which is that bottom blue line. It's kind of getting ready to intersect with the 200, 100, and 50-day moving average. And again, the 50, 100, and 200-day moving average, those are very important indicators there. Generally, when you drop below all three of those, you tend to go a bit lower. Not all the time, but you tend to go a bit lower. Uh, so the question really is at this point, so when are we gonna pull the trigger? Are we really that close? And I would say there's a very good chance we want to over the next four, we'll say four to eight trading days where we will actually move out of the treasuries and the high, uh, high yield money markets, and then shift that over to growth portfolios. Uh, so we're still waiting. I'm not saying this is an absolute, but we are getting really close to going back into a normal growth portfolio for our clients. So yeah, Rocky, I think we will be able to take a little bit of a breather at that point because we're always watching the market, always looking to see is it time yet? And I think we're getting really, really close. So what does that mean? I think we're getting close, right? Yeah, I think that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm getting kind of excited. So if the market goes down another 5%, would I be a little bit happier? Probably. Yeah. Because when you think about it, matter of fact, let's go back to, let's go back to that last chart, the S&P 500 equal weighted. Um, when you look at when we actually moved out of the equities and moved into the treasuries, we were maybe even two and a half percent of the, the highs in the market. So let's call it, let's call it 7%. Now, if we just got in today, we'd pick up approximately, what, three? 3.3% uh, between the delta on when we got out of equities and then when we got back into equities. So if we drop another 5%, I, I'm tickled about that because uh, even though we may not catch the bottom, which we're not trying to do, we may not catch the bottom, but what we do know is if it goes down a little bit further, it is going to capitulate and we're going to take 100% of the gains on the way back up. So that's really where the focus is right now and what we are planning on doing. Sounds good. Okay. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Rocky. You can talk a little bit about the broader market and what we're seeing from the economic indicators. Yeah, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the economy. So we always refer back to our chart of the 25 leading economic indicators. And again, you know, this has been pretty negative for the last nine to 12 months. We see this start last year, um, about midway of the year, where we had a lot of green at the beginning of 2022, which meant that the green dials mean that things were moving in a positive direction. However, that uh, changed as they raised interest rates. Everything started to become a little bit more 
uh, negative forward looking in, in the economy. And we're still seeing that play out. However, when you look at the latest update we've got here, we've got a couple of things we wanna point out that changed in September. First of all, um, we're grading monetary policy to actually have improved a little bit. Let me give you a little reason why that uh, we believe it's improving is because the Fed in many ways is signaling that they're near the end of the rate hike cycle. Uh, they may raise rates one more time this year. Uh, more than that would be a little bit surprising. But the bottom line is, if you can tell looking at that first red dial there, monetary policy, the shaded, light shaded gray is a little bit under the black, and the black is the current. So it means it actually has moved to the right. And again, once the Fed start, stops raising interest rates, this will probably move into the yellow, which is a good sign. And then in the future, which could happen sometime in 2024, where they actually start lowering rates, you would see this start to move into the green. A couple other things we wanna point out is that the labor market and consumer pen spending continues to slow. That's exactly what the Fed is trying to do. They're trying to slow down an overheated economy. So this is not unexpected. So seeing a little bit of continued movement uh, showing slower growth in consumer spending, sh slowing, showing slower uh, growth in the labor markets. Those are actually silver linings to getting this economy to bottom out and start picking up again. So I think overall, from an economic standpoint, from where we were three months ago to now, these are still positives, that the economy is slowing, and remember that the probability of a deep recession has been getting less and less that is going true. into 2024. So that's kind of a recap of the economy where we're at, but we're gonna keep our eye on it as we move forward. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, I understand exactly where you're coming from when you're looking at it and you're saying, well, it's, it's getting better. It's kind of a positive. Uh, it's, sometimes it's tough to see two extra reds and a green and say it's positive, but it's kind of like getting the infection out. It hurts a little bit more, but you know after that, it's going to feel better. Um, so it's, I don't know if that was a good analogy, but hey, that's what I had. Um, so we have solutions. Uh, we are a wealth management firm. We talk about this all the time. Effectively, we do investment solutions for clients. That's where the investments come in. Uh, that is really the fuel that drives everything else that we do for our clients. And that's the wealth enhancement strategies, the wealth transfer strategies, wealth protection, and again, the charitable giving. And we wrap that all up with all the professionals necessary to execute each one of these categories. So if you want to hear more, we've got um, a lot of information on our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to, you can just go to our website, mydkna.com, click on Watch Us, then DKNA YouTube, and it'll bring you directly to the YouTube site. So you take care of your family and... We'll take care of you. We're ready for the future. Awesome. Have we'll great, see you. Have a great day.